good morning guys i hope everyone is doing great so welcome back to our channel today we are here with one more important interview question that is what our solid principles this is a mandatory interview question if you are an experienced candidate and if you are unable to answer this question 99.9 percent uh, there are chances that you will get rejected uh, i uh, because uh, this is my personal experience like a uh, few years back like when I was having just 1.5 or 2, 2 and a half years of experience, I, st I thought of switching and I was used to attend, like me and my friends used to attend interviews. So what, uh, every interview I used to face this question, what are solid principles? So I never used to answer, I directly used to say without wasting time, I don't know what are solid principles. And I used to give more importance, even while I, while I was preparing, I used to give more importance to coding questions, collections and all those things, comparator, comparable and all those things, exceptions. So this part I was more uh, more concentrated rather than theory, theory because this is a theoretical question. So I always used to get rejected. So as the time passed, all my friends moved out of my company and I was the only guy stuck. So I was attending one interview with one of the product based company. I don't want to reveal the name. And in that interview, again, I was faced this question. I faced this question in the first round, first question. Like what are solid principles? So I was unable to answer. I directly said without hesitating, I don't know what are solid principles. And that guy looked uh, a stunning uh, reaction he gave me and he continued with other questions. So like 10 to 12 questions he asked me, I was able to answer all the questions and I was not able to answer this. And this was happening with me in all the interviews. So I asked him so why solid principles are given that much importance. So he said, okay uh, Ravi uh, you in your current project uh, how many classes uh, are there so I said more than 100 uh, and how many packages uh, he said uh, like 10 like more than 10 12 packages are there 10 15 packages are there and then asked me uh, certain other things like how many prop XMLs are there property files are there all those things so when I answered him so he said me so can't we write all the logic uh, inside a controller itself whenever a request comes I will have all the logic in one class only so I the, uh, he said me like can't we have so I said uh, we can have everything because Java don't restrict us we can have everything inside one single class itself entire application in one single class right so I said I was in bit dilemma uh, yes we can have then why then he asked me why don't we have like that so I said whenever we don't know anything like at that time we used to say it's a standard that has been defined in the project so i said the same thing that's the standard so say he laughed and said you go back home and you google it why are we having different classes different packages interfaces uh, code structure in that way and you will end up uh, learning solid principles so i came back and th at that point i learned solid principles so just wanted to share this experience so share so coming to the question what are solid principles the term solid is an acronym of five design principles intended to make software designs more understandable flexible and maintainable solid principles are the design principles that enables us to manage the software design problems so basically solid is nothing but like SOLID uh, is an acronym of five different things so it stands for single responsibility principle or SRP you can say O stands for open closed principle or OSP L stands for list scope substitution principle LSP I stands for interface segregation principle IS D for dependency inversion principle so these are the five principles that helps us a lot while developing a project or any class so in the end I will be answering like how I answer this question now so don't miss that section as well so what are the advantages that we get using solid principles so we can achieve a reduction in complexity of code with the solid principle reduce tight coupling we can avoid the tight coupling here reduce error and implement a reusability here so we can reuse the code increase readability extensibility and maintenance achieve be better testability so these are the few advantages that I feel we get so coming to the first principle that is single responsibility principle so, uh, like 
this is a bookish definition you can say a class should have only one reason to change so this is a bookish knowledge a uh, definition of srp that is single principle single responsibility principle every module or class should have responsibility over a single part of the functionality provided by the software and that responsibility should be entirely encapsulated by the class so this is about the single responsibility principle and mostly a class should be designed in such a way that it only handles a particular or only one functionality related things you cannot include different things in inside the same class so that violates srp if you are doing that so next is l l for this code substitution principle so objects in a program should be replaceable with the instance of their subtypes without altering the correct correctness of the program so this is the definition what it means is if a program or a model is a base class then the reference of the base class can be replaced with the derived class without affecting the functionality of the program module we can also state that derived type must be substitutable for their base types so that is the scope substitution principle it for generally in simple words if at all we want to put it so base type class can hold child class reference without having it huge impact on the application so that should, that is how we need to provide the implementation the third is open closed principle which is software entities should be open for extension but closed for modification so the design and the writing of the code should be in such a way should be done in such a way that the new functionality should be added with a minimal changes to the existing code or you can say it as the design should be uh, the design should be in a way th to allow the adding of a new functionality as a new classes keeping as much as possible existing code unchanged so why is that why do we need that is because our uh, existing classes sh should be closed for modification if at all we are changing the existing classes uh, uh what i can say frequently uh, there are high chances that we we may introduce new bugs only if at all we want to fix the bugs then only we should modify the existing classes the next is interface segregation principle so what it states is client should not be forced to depend upon interface that they don't want to use so this is the definition uh, we should not enforce clients to implement interfaces that they don't use instead of creating one big interface we can break down it into smaller interfaces so here uh, instead of having only one uh, we should segregate a uh, interface in such a way that uh, the class that is implementing that interface should should provide the functionality it should not be like uh, uh, unnecessarily we have to override some method and returning null from it we should not do that so instead of that we should segregate the interface properly the next and the last thing is dependency inversion principle that says depend on abstraction not on concretions abstraction should not depend on the details whereas details should depend on abstraction so this is the last and final uh, principle that is we have to depend on the abstraction so these were the five solid principles so coming to the question like how i answer so this is how i answer basically solid principle acts as guidelines to developers while designing the class or project solid is an acronym for five different principles that is s for single responsibility o for open closed principle l for list closed principle i for interface segregation and d for dependency inversion while designing class we should make sure that each class should have only one functionality related code a class should be open for extension but closed for modification which is second principle list scope substitution principle states that the parent class can hold child class reference without having any issues in the code interface segregation said, states that we should not make a class to implement unnecessary interfaces and and dependency inversion means we should depend on abstraction rather than concretion so this is how i answer within a minute and after that there will be cross questions on this as well like where exactly give an example where exactly you have used uh list scope substitution principle so uh you have to give you have to explain if at all you have used list scope substitution principle and believe me 99.9 .9 projects use all this principle uh, it's just you need to find where exactly you have used what and uh, there might be a question that have you ever seen a code violating 
uh, these principles yes you might have seen look I, I at least i have seen there are many classes that implement interfaces and in the method that they override they simply write one logger this method will never be called from this class so that is breaking of the principle when we don't need that method why are we implementing that interface we haven't segregated our interface properly there and there are chances that you might see uh, the classes especially uh, well suppose a validation class is that it, it's a primary its complete function should be validating upon some employee object suppose it should validate only employee object instead of that you may see it might be sending email also after upon validating it might send an email to something or it might do a db insert operation so that is wrong so these are the places like where we violate solid principles so that is this that is it from this video like about solid principle so i hope if you have liked the video you can subscribe or like subscribe if you haven't subscribed the channel you can subscribe if you feel if we, this is beneficial you can like the video you can share this video to other technical platforms to help others or if you have any feedback you can comment it out in the comment section as well so that is about this video and if you are on our channel for the first time and if you have a question like who are we and what we do so we are basically a bunch of software engineers who attend interviews with different MNCs and share our real-time interview experiences through these videos if you want to share us your interview experience you can mail your experience at the email ID that is given in the description apart from that or you can visit our channel and see the number of like more than 100 interview experiences we have already shared and I personally feel that that is really helpful to lot of people because uh, like daily we get ten, tens mail like more than 10 15 mails saying like thank you mails that our channel is helping uh, at least a few people I we really feel very happy when we see that kind of mails because the intention was that to help people and if you liked it if you haven't subscribed it just subscribe the channel because there are many videos that are there in the queue as we are not getting time you are not preparing more videos and thank you for watching